Welcome to Crimson Guitars, or at least to my home workshop. I'm Ben Crow, and I am currently taking one of Crimson's SRP kit guitars and turning it into a Cyberpunk 2077 themed instrument. And uh, this is throughout quarantine and lockdown and all of this insanity that's going on. And uh, I have learned several valuable lessons. Um, key being that I am a distractible individual and really should concentrate on what the hell I'm doing. Burn it. Ha <laughs> ha, yay! I spent a lot of time and energy uh, sorting out the LEDs on this replacement fretboard because the first one messed up because I was distractible and changeable. Um, and only to realize that the fretboard that they'd made for me um, was intelligently slightly oversized and I hadn't twigged. Uh, so essentially, I'm setting it aside and waiting until I need to make a... Actually, that would probably do for a seven string thinking about that. So that's a way. In this episode, you are going to see me make a fretboard. And I am going to actually make the fretboard. Uh, I'm going to be making the fretboard. I'm then going to be radiusing it, slotting it by hand with use of a mitre jig uh, or a fret slotting jig, etc. And I will then, and I've, I've got a very, very interesting idea for this. I will then put in LED uh, dots again. In this time though, by dint of how insanely complex the, the guitar itself is, and since I'm making a fretboard, uh, I can choose to not have dots on the front. And that's what I'm going to do. I've got a very, very subtle, a very subtle effect in mind. And uh, basically I have here a bunch of B or C or even D grade ebony fretboards that have uh, accrued over the years at Crimson. And I'm going to slice these down into a, a grid-like pattern of a fretboard that is going to be relatively subtle but will fit, I think, in the sort of mechanical kind of feel of the Cyberpunk 2077 world. So without any more talking, I will say, Click like and subscribe. So the plan is to take a bunch of these fretboards, cut them into little wedges, essentially, at that angle, glue them together. The end result will be a grid-like pattern. If I'd left a 90 degree cut there, you would end up with fills and nastiness. But uh, here we have a nice smooth joint. And I think that a bunch of these strips all stuck together is going to make a very interesting and unique fretboard while being a good use of essentially pretty much scrap ebony that otherwise would, well, we're not going to go into pen making of Crimson Guitars anytime soon, are we? I'm going to be uh, spending a lot of time on the bandsaw here. The, the extractor doesn't turn itself on auto automatically, although record do do a version that does. I am going to install this quickly. Uh, I've got a couple of these <laughs> covered in dust. As you can see, I've been meaning to put them in. And uh, this will allow, basically, you turn the machine on, it turns the extractor on, you turn it off, vice versa. Simple will make life much easier, especially when there's a camera in the way. Now, we use these in the student's room uh, at Crimson Guitars, and it's a fantastic little bit of kit. Important, read and close instructions before use. Ah. Do, 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 do. Points if you know what uh, podcast I'm currently listening to. Okay. Auto, when the connected power tool is switched on, the vacuum will automatically switch on after a delay of about one second. Easy. It also looks really cool. Suppose I should stick this on the wall over there. 
no matter where I put the camera, it's in the way. And this is why I built the walls out of uh, heavy duty, uh, sort of 18 mil ply. That is going to make my life much easier. Well, I don't know what happened there. Hmm. I think I've thrown a blade somewhere. I don't know how. I don't know why. <laughs> Let's see what happened there. This is a very secondhand machine that I got through my other company, VintageToolShop.com. And uh, this is the first time I've used it in anger. I didn't expect... I didn't expect the blade to fall off though. I think maybe one of these pieces fell down the back and pushed the blade off uh, to the front. Huh. Okay, well the drive belt is falling apart. <clears throat> we, we don't tend to deal in machines because of issues like this. How many of you think that I need to replace this with a, uh, a record power? So that's messed up. Blade's not broken there. So. All right. One of my favorite things about bandsaws is uh, when it goes wrong, it doesn't spit teeth in your face. It's all pretty much contained. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, as near as I can tell, one of these things came in, went behind the blade somehow and just pulled it off, or possibly a chunk of that drive belt fell off, but I don't know how it would do what that did. We live, we breathe, success. Uh, yes, I need to get myself a Sabre 250 by record power, but I haven't, I haven't made the call yet. So, um, I've made myself a fairly basic shooting board with the, uh, with the angle on that we need. And basically, well, that's it. It's in the vise. There's a bit of wood there, you can see that. And it's gonna make this easier. I don't have a table saw here. Again, I haven't, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to get the Triton router table, so the Triton work center with the router table and the, the table saw attachment, etc. The little table saw I have, the micro thing we used for the Perspex, doesn't have an angle jig on it, and that would actually be perfect for this. Uh, and this here is somewhat too beefy to chop up the little bits of wood that we need to do. So, uh, uh, yeah, by hand it is. I need some wax. So this is keeping it square and flat and true. So you see the back of the plane is touching first and then as, I, as it planes down, it'll come flush. Okay, so the angles are the same, which means when you put them together, you get something that is roughly straight. Uh, and I'm going for two different pieces, uh, or two pieces that are of slightly different colors. Uh, once it's oiled, it's gonna be subtle. I hope it's not gonna be too subtle. But, um, yeah, it should. That should work all right. Yeah, and I'm, I'm doing this rapidly. I'm just gonna go with super glue and glue these joints. They're not gonna be structural long-term because there's gonna be other pieces in between them. 
yeah, there's no actual structure to these things because you're going to have multiple, multiple slats all together giving, in fact, this is probably going to be a much, much stronger fretboard than any normal fretboard. Meh. Argue me in the comments below. Or at me at Instagram. <laughs> the real Ben Crow. Uh, all right. This is going to take a while. I'm, I'm enjoying this. Erp, erp, erp. Pretty much done. So that's what it looks like. All together. Okay, let's look at what's in front of me rather than what's through the screen. Ta-da! You can see what I'm aiming for. All right, so I'm gonna leave this to cure overnight. I need to work smart, not hard. As much as I love planing, there is no point in me planing two of these four faces flat. I can run it through the bandsaw and get the, the depth that I'm after and then plane it in half a second. It's rather annoying that it's taken me three and a half rods to figure that out. I have made a fair few shavings and I'm really happy with the result. The mess. I'm not even done yet. We've got a fairly digital looking ebony fretboard. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna glue this up now and see where we end up. Did you just make a panda head? Let me show everybody. That is super cool. Lego panda head. Should I make a Lego guitar with my kids one day. I think we should. What do you say? Yes or no? Panda, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wearing your crimson t-shirt today. Anyway, get the hence boy child. Leave me be. Done. That will settle for overnight. And we'll be, uh, we'll be good. Good morning, you beautiful people. Okay, so I should have used a different way of clamping this. It's a little bit uneven on the bottom. Uh, I, uh, I could have clamped it down to a bench and then clamped it sideways or even made a wedging kind of a jig. Uh, where you tap it in with wedges and da, 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 da. doing it up in the air like this was probably actually probably actually a bad idea. Uh, it was too damned hot, and that's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. Anyway, let us see what we've got. Aha. 
That's a pleasing noise. I have made it much chunkier than it needed to be, so we've got a lot of room to play. Yeah, we've got a fretboard in there for sure. Okay. Got a bit of a bow in it, which is expected because the uh, surface that was on the bench was, is not flat yet. Um, I'm gonna cut away the excess on the bandsaw and then do a little bit more planing. I'm very happy with how this is turning out. There's several pointers when I, before I glued it up, I made sure that the grain was going as much as possible in the same direction, uh, which made that planing uh, much easier than it could have been. If I had set it all up with cross-grained, uh, it would be a nightmare. Um, yeah, I'm happy. Uh, short plane to start with, to rough out. So that's a number three bedrock from vintagetoolshop.com and then uh, a longer number six to get a, a flatter a flatter piece here is a quick tip for planing very basically if you're hitting the piece of wood dead nuts on like that your blade is at the angle that the that the plane was designed to hold it at which is fine and good if you're struggling, if you've got something like this incredibly sexy fretboard that is just a little bit different and difficult, if you angle your plane like so, essentially what you're doing is lowering the effective angle of the blade and slicing the wood, and it will make it easier, although less likely to be flat because, you know, the arse of your plane is off the edge, but you can then go back on the last few passes and fix any issues. Um, try it. It works even so if you've got a low angle plane and then you do that, it lowers it even more. It's quite amazing. Do it. Try it at home. Try this at home. So this is pretty flat. This is the top section. I want this to be the, the back of the guitar. Oh, crikey, that ended up being exactly the right width. Well, that was lucky. All right. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm gonna cut that end off there and see what this does here i'm not sure but at this point i'm thinking about leaving that rear end of the fretboard just as it is maybe even digitizing it a bit more actually that just looks yeah I might cut a bunch more out once I've cut the slots. And that might well work well with that kind of bitty kind of effect. Always set the bandsaw up so that you can't really, with the work in there, get your hand um, through the blade because if you sneeze or slip or something, then that could hurt. Pretty. Okay, so now the fretboard is uh Masking tape and superglued onto a flat piece of uh, mahogany. That's lifted it up off the fretboard. I'm going to use a hand plane, my 
number six to roughly radius the fretboard. Uh, that in combination with radius gauges, I suppose I'll use the crimson knotted ones because I don't appear to have the others here. I'm going to uh, use that to mark it to, to get to the very, very, very close to the final radius. This is much, much faster than using a radius block. It takes a little bit more uh, hand-eye coordination. Uh, and if you've never used a plane before, then... Well, no, do you know what? If you've never used a plane before, then get some scrap wood, watch a few videos, don't even necessarily watch mine, about how to sharpen, although I've done a bunch of videos how to sharpen, links somewhere, maybe and set up your plane, and if it's not working, <sighs> chances are it just needs to be set up a little bit more. But uh, yeah, you can get very close to the radius, or at the very least save you an hour of sanding with a radius block if you start out with a hand plane. We're golden. So first of all, I take off two angles. I go down to the level, uh, to the furthest level. I've got the wrong one in my right ear. Hold on. Pause, there we go. Uh, <laughs> first of all, I go right down to uh, the, the lowest point that I want to be, and then I'll round it over. I'm gonna stop talking now and start doing this. Now, when you're radiusing a fretboard with a plane, uh, yeah, with a plane, I suppose, uh, if you angle the plane as if it's going along the strings, so it's got that sort of a, a look to it, then you're going to create an, a radius that is the same all the way along the fretboard. If you want to create a, uh, a compound radius, then basically go parallel to the center line all the way across and I want I want a compound radius so essentially we are around about 12 inches here actually a little bit flatter now so probably 14 nearly there but up at the end here it's going to be 10 yeah nearly 10 a little bit of tidying up to do of course and I'm always wary, I'm always wary of <sighs> radiusing and flattening and perfecting a fretboard prior to gluing it onto the neck. So I'm going to do just a little bit more work on here. I'm going to cut the fret slots because uh, that's what fits into the, the slotting jig down there. And uh, then we'll glue it onto the fretboard expecting to have to make a few adjustments uh, once it's actually glued and in place. Ah, this is, this is the one issue with uh, um, the masking tape and super glue trick. Every now and then you put a little bit too much super glue on and uh, there is a little bit of cleanup. Still, nowhere near as horrible as your average double-sided tape, I tell you. If you uh, haven't yet seen it, uh, I've done a couple of videos specifically about this trick and uh, it's well worth watching. Check the uh, link. Yeah. He thinks I need to sharpen this chisel. And clean my floor. Leveling beams are useful for so much more than just leveling frets and fretboard. Perfect. This is where the fun truly, truly begins. Crimson's new fantastic bump, bump noise, sorry. Crimson's new fantastic fret slotting jig is going to make life much easier. 25 inch scale, 
Let us get these red slots cut. So, what is the offset? So the template fits against a pin in here, which locates it. I then push the fretboard. So I should probably not have cut this nut slot. I could have left it longer. I should have left it longer. And then this would have been a lot easier. But uh, I did because I'm so used to doing things my way, which is, uh, or the old way, my old way by hand. Anyway, that is now the offset as to where the nut needs to be, and I can just figure out where on the other side I need to put my masking tape. Don't you love ebony? I love ebony. It's a bit of a problem to draw on it though, isn't it? This would also be much easier if I was using a thicker, sort of a wider chunk of wood. Uh, now, of course, I could make it wider if I need to. I've got a lot more of this ebony. Uh, tape it down, make sure that the nut is square to where the saw wants to be. And there we go. We're located in the pin, which is in there. The nut is uh, square to where the saw wants to be. And that is, that is where I want it to be. By the way, don't do this with blue tape. It has, the blue tape has a shiny surface to it and it doesn't hold the glue quite as nicely. Essentially, this is a very, very simple, albeit incredibly well-made fret slotting jig. There's a little pin located in the, anyway, there's a pin in there. It locates into slots in the template of which there are, uh, there's two templates with four different scale lengths and that holds it square up against the edge of the jig. We've got height adjustment for the saw and then the crimson fretting saw. The saw runs along on top of the bearings and that acts, acts as your uh, depth stop. So we can cut our fret slots perfectly to the correct depth that we require. Now, if you want to get finicky uh, and match the fret slot bottom to the radius of the fretboard, which is a good idea. You don't want to have too much space. Then uh, cut the slot uh, this way, uh, part of the way down, and then uh, use the old technique to just uh, get it to depth. And that way you'll have you know, as much strength and stability as possible while also not running the risk of cutting it by hand and messing up, which we have all done. And in my case, I've done it more than a few times, sadly. Uh, let me know, what do you think? Should I do a uh, top 10 mistakes I've made as a guitar builder video? <laughs> I forgot the clamps I did. There we go. Mm, well, that was fun, wasn't it? I am happy. If you've seen a fretboard like this, please let me know. Um, I think I'm gonna do more like it moving forward. And uh, this jig, this is the first time I've used the, uh, the final version of this. I couldn't be happier. I've been wanting a fret slotting jig at Crimson Guitars since we started making tools about eight years ago. And uh, this is finally, finally there. So yeah, check it out.
At this stage, the edges of my fretboard are weird. They do not line up absolutely perfectly. And I need to finalize that. So I need to drill location holes through the fret slots into the neck. And then I would normally put a, a toothpick or something like that in there, but I can't find any here. I think my children have studied them for nefarious purposes. That will then locate it and I'll be able to work out, uh, even clamp it in place uh, or use the masking tape and super glue trick and file plane, etc. it down to size. I am instead going to use a small piece of uh, silver solder, which is strong enough to hold it in place, but also soft enough that I will be able to cut through it with a fret slotting saw and remove it as required. Obviously, it'll be hidden behind the frets. So, yeah, third, third fret or so, and third to last fret or so, on opposite sides of the, the neck, or the opposite sides of the truss rod, shall we say, and that will allow me to be sure it's exactly where it needs to be. So what I'm doing is lining up the nut, making sure that's in place. Again, this would all be a lot easier if I was doing it uh, from scratch, but I'm renovating a kit guitar. Although this has been fun today. This has been more like building, because it has been building. Come on, man. This is absolutely crucial. Okay. I don't have a hand drill here. I mean, I have a hand drill. I don't have a me-powered hand drill. Now, because of the curve of the neck, I don't want to go through. I'm going offset just near. So the truss rod's bang in the middle. I'm just off the truss rod in the meatiest part of the neck here. There we go. Fret end cusses are most useful. So, that's in place now. I love using beautiful tools. I hope it uh, ends up with beautiful things being made. This is a, a little bronze mitre plane. You can see the witness marks of how I hold it. And this was made by uh, Bill Carter in London. Um, he's still still making today. Fantastic stuff. I think this this feels like a good place to stop this video. Uh, I had planned to get the uh, the side dots done in LEDs, but you have, by this point in this series, had your fill of this particular individual installing LEDs into a fretboard. Uh, so I'm, I'm not necessarily going to film the entire process. Uh, as I am thinking it, at this particular point, I want to have side dots that also protrude like they did on the, the middle fretboard. Uh, but I'm thinking about actually having them protrude a little bit up, essentially drill them onto this top corner. So it's acting as a side dot and a, a front dot, as it were. Um, and, and protruding just a little bit. The, the way I play, I'm keeping this guitar, the way I play, I don't think I'm going to notice that too much. I might recess them in a chamfer or something. And I want to sit and think about that for a little while. Um, but I am incredibly happy with how this fretboard has turned out. I think if I had a good planar thicknesser, I would have used that and I would have uniform width pieces and I would have uh, gone to the trouble of figuring out center lines and and all of that jazz but the, the 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 chaos that we have here it makes me happy I think it works 
particularly well. I'm going to go and get the body quickly. We can have a look at that. See what it see what it all looks like together. Oh, and by the way, one of uh, one of you fantastic individuals. Uh, I don't have the name in my brain right now, but uh, check them out on Instagram. They did an incredible, um, an incredible digital drawing of me, cyberpunk styly with this finished guitar, and single-handedly decided the correct colour for it because I can't do, I can't not use the blue. I can't. It just has to be blue now. It works so well. So. Uh, yeah, if there's any more of that, bring it on. I love it. Um, and please go and follow this dude on Instagram. By the way, only like half of you have subscribed. Literally 51 point something percent of the, the people who watch this video are subscribed. What are you waiting for? It, like, it literally makes a huge difference to the way I feel about myself. And, and, and the channel and, and all of that stuff. So if you haven't subscribed, but you've watched all of these videos, you're like, what? It feels like 40 videos into this series right now. Subscribe, damn it. Anyway, let's get the body. <laughs> and hit the bell button. Okay, so I've got this, uh, I've got that thing protruding through, still in the way. I can put the, the neck Roughly in place, though. <laughs> Look at my floor. What have we done to my floor, people? Flip. Anyway, I think this guitar is going to be amazing. I love that look. I want to see this style of fretboard proliferating the internets, because I think that's cool. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Click like, subscribe, hit the notification button, mash that mat. That, that button, no, I can't do it. <laughs> uh, I am not that YouTuber. I'll see you guys next week. Have a good one. Cheers. <laughs> <No>. <laughs>